Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is March 7th, 2017, and this is our episode number 100. In the past two episodes, we have been looking at a company called Engie, formerly known as Tractebel, and we were able to assess uh, a healthy looking debt to equity, an okay liabilities to equity, a good current ratio. Uh, let's just remind ourselves here that it was not entirely clear if these numbers refer to uh, a consolidated balance sheet, uh, meaning uh, Angie itself and all the companies it holds, <coughs> or just for the controlling company, just for Angie isolated. I have a hunch it's much better to look at all of them uh, because if the company itself looks okay but it, it holds a lot of unhealthy companies, uh, this is uh, an unhealthy situation. It, and if we were or if we are to invest in Angie, we must be absolutely clear about that, if it's consolidated or for just a controlling company. And it must be a favorable number for the consolidated, uh, for all of them. And then we moved on and we looked at the earnings and we saw, well, first, it's a company that over the last 10 years has been profitable every single year. You have to respect that. Uh, this is not so easy to do. Uh, also, uh, it kind of stayed uh stable the earnings are, are relatively stable and we will figure out now if it's actually declining or or what of these earnings because we were not able to, we didn't come around to adjusting for inflation and this is what we're going to do today we're going to take these earnings and uh, adjust them for past inflation and we will see the p10 after this adjustment this should give us a more realistic uh, number for uh, P10 for NG. So just to remind ourselves, uh, a non-inflation adjusted number was 18, 18.06. And I said I had a hunch that we would, we might even come below 15 here for uh, the inflation adjusted. So how do we go about that? Well, we've, for uh, the last year, we can just apply the very same number because we can ignore inflation since this was finished just two months ago. And we're not living in a rampant inflation environment. You know, it will be 6%, 4%, but we can ignore that. And then for the other years, we start applying inflation. So what we do here, I'm just going to find <clears throat> some inflation calculator. I never really know which one to, to apply. Sometimes we do IPCA, IGPM. Let me even Google here if somebody has an opinion on this. Uh. So I see a mention to IGPDI. Is does that even exist here? Yeah. Okay. You know. Let's just use that. It's not like I know something that that you don't. Uh, I think the most important point here is we're not looking for close calls. We're not looking for narrow. Okay, we narrowly invested in this company. This is why we don't need to worry too much about which criteria here, unless we know some one of one or more of these are completely off. Okay. So. Uh, so for 15, we, we, we pretend uh, we, this number was from 
January 2016. So we take uh, just the following month there. So January 16. And okay, we are in March of 2017. We can use that. That's okay. And so it was an, an even 1500. So let's calculate that. Apparently some error. Let's try, I don't know, IGPM. Try again. An error. Let's see here for February. Lots of errors there. Let's reload this. Let's see. January 2016. I've used this calculator so much. Uh, never failed on me. I think we're having to wait here. We're having to wait a, a heck of a lot. Just going to open another one and do the same thing. It's taking too long. Time to check for the internet. If it's even working. Yep, it seems to be. Okay. Let's look for another calculator. I like this one. Let's see if it works. I see it's saying the index is not available for February or March. Makes sense. Okay, so for the 2015, we can adjust to 1614. And you can see here on an adjusted basis, uh, we have a decline. Okay, let's do another one. So now 0, 1, 2, 15, 0, 1, 2, 17. And uh, okay, closing this, closing this, closing this. And we have 1382, 1382. Wow, 1648. Amazing, right? Again, let me just do one thing here to help us visualize this at the same time here. There you go. There you go. Okay, so in January 2014, and then till January 2017, we have 1436. So 1775. It doesn't matter the decimal numbers there. So we just keep on going this is quite mechanical since we have a calculator there so January 13 
And then we have fourteen ninety nine. Nineteen fifty six, and I am aware that I kind of dropped. I I fell back to the IGPM. It's it's no big deal. Uh, zero one two thousand twelve, zero one twenty seventeen, and then fourteen forty eight. 2037 so it's quite remarkable at least I think so how on an adjusted basis uh, it's a, it's a decline it's a it looks like a steady not too steep but clear decline there Not anymore, though. So, oh, one, two thousand ten, ten ninety one, seventeen ninety five. Oh one two thousand nine, oh one two thousand seventeen eleven, fifteen, eighteen oh three, and finally oh one two thousand and eight. Ten forty six. Eighteen fifty-eight. So it, you see, ten years ago uh, we have an inflation of eighty uh, percent. Since then, so now we can even copy the earnings average here, the, the formula. So this will come up to seventeen eighty-two. And the PE inflation adjusted now will be this earning, sorry, the, mark, the current market cap divided by this earnings, and it will be 13.45. It's quite a difference there, right? Uh, from 18 down to 13. And this is the, the real number. This is the actual number you should pay attention to because it's inflation adjusted. Uh, okay, so what do we make of this number, 13.45? It's not a terrible number. We're, we're looking for companies around 10, if they're not uh, growing at all, but if they're stable. And 13.45, still, you know, 35% above that. So uh, at this point, I'm not incredibly excited about Angie but it's not like I'm I'm throwing it out right uh, and it's close enough here that I would like to look at another metric and dedicate another episode to Angie uh, to looking at its cash flow so cash flow the operating cash flow is different from the earnings because you see it uh, like closer to the metal, so to speak. Uh, the literally the cash flow, so the, the what's coming in minus what it's, what's going out, and that may give us a, a quite a different picture of compared to the earnings here. And if that's much more favorable, we may get a little more excited about Angie. 
in other situations, um, and of course here we know very little qualitatively about energy, uh, this scenario here might seem uh, bordering on attractive in certain situations, but it's all about uh, your opportunity cost, right? What else could you be doing with with your with your funds? And right now we are still in a recovery from a, from the financial crisis here in Brazil, and I believe there are, there are better opportunities out there. Not many, but enough to justify. Uh, not being too excited about Angie at all. So, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in future episodes. Uh, in our next episode, so back to Angie for cash flow, looking at its cash flow, free cash flow. And if you haven't watched past episodes, we have 99 more. So, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye bye.